Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Tyrone back with Tech Life. Great article here from Fierce Network. I'll leave a link to it in the description so you guys could check it out. So for those of you who have been following the channel for a while now, um, a lot of this 5G advanced uh, talk and, 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 and actual updates that are coming out, is, it's all going to be linked to T-Mobile. T-Mobile had the head start, right? They got... They got clean, uh, low band in the six, 600 megahertz auction that they deployed with dual band radios that were capable of LTE and 5G. So they just simply had the head start. Long before mid band um, came along in the Sprint merger, they just had the head start, right? They've been deploying this since 2017, 2018. Uh, 600 had to clear in phases. And T Mobile has been deploying it since back then. So they've been making investments towards 5G already back in those days, like 2017, 2018, when they got the Spectrum, all of that played a factor in 5G. And that also uh, led to them updating and modernizing the, the core and everything. So T-Mobile simply has a head start. But we're starting to hit the uh, a very similar scenario that we did during LTE. We're now starting to hit the scenario where the networks are more modern than the devices. Let me explain. So Verizon is on the up and up right when it comes to 5G. They had a great head start on LTE. Nobody else was deploying LTE when Verizon got started. And now Verizon is really wanting to deploy a 5G network which I feel is has a lot of 6G in mind. And I know there's no standard for that today, but there's there's an idea and, and, and there are thoughts and opinions out there on what 6G potentially looks like. And I think that's what Verizon is building and in, incorporating in their strategy and planning today. So T-Mobile, and even in this article, as you can see, T-Mobile is linked to this 5G advance because they discussed it launching later this year. Mind you, the newer, the, the newer iPhone 16s, the Pros, the Maxes, right? They cannot take advantage. There was a report released earlier this morning with the Snapdragon X, X71. The 16s cannot take advantage of any of the standardized advanced 5G advanced features by the 3GPP. So you, you're going to have to have either a Galaxy S24 from what I was reading in the report or the up and coming S25, right? So yes, there are devices that can make use of it, but it's far and few in between. We know, uh, we all know Apple iPhones, they have huge, uh, large amounts of share in the, uh, in the United States. Um, so for those of you who have an iPhone 16, 16 Pro, 16 Pro Max, or 16 Plus, you, you won't get any of the 5G advanced features that are, that are launching later this year. I mean, Later this year, is, it's, it's technically here. Well, we got two more months, November and December. We're already in October, or actually November is tomorrow. So, so yes, so Verizon has been taking their time because they already knew, okay, we would be coming in from behind. And they understand this technology can only move so fast, right? You have to have communication. You have to have the OEMs on board. You have to have the chipset makers on board. And then, of course, you want to build the most effective and efficient uh, 5G network that you possibly can. And, and I feel that's, that's, that's what Verizon is doing, right? Even though they're starting late, Verizon can now incorporate certain things that, you know, T-Mobile possibly missed, as an example, right? Because they started early. Now there's a, a, a newer standard that Verizon can now uh, still incorporate because they're still modernizing and touching their network. That's just an example. I'm not saying that's happening, but I'm, I'm saying that's just an example. So Verizon is, is furiously building out the C-band, right? 270 million pops now, 300 uh, million plus in the future. So they're closing that gap relatively, relatively quickly, at least the mid-band gap to T-Mobile, right? So there's some other uh, bands and, and spectrum assets that they're going to have to shift to NR. Um, they will probably, um, Verizon will very likely wait for LTE to be uh, to be used less before they shift and 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 refarm spectrum from LTE to 5G. That's just how it's going to be. 
But, you know, T-Mobile having the head start, it's it's a good thing, right? It's 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 new, it's fresh, it's something the company's never done been, been able to do before, like lead in the technology and 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 have it at scale. But Verizon is is not too far behind. And now that we're heading into the 5G advanced features and everything else, with the device support being behind a bit, it's Right, I'm not saying it's going to be useless for T-Mobile. Of course, it's going to be some people that are going to make use of this, but the majority that are sitting on the iPhones, uh, if you have, I don't know, another device besides uh, a Galaxy, um, I mean, you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to use 5G advanced. Another thing too, and for from the chip makers, like if you have an outdated, not outdated, but a bit of a older FWA device. Don't know if uh, if if those devices have 5G advanced uh, features on it, right? So you you're gonna have to constantly be upgrading routers, and so you guys catch my drift. So yes, Verizon did start from a point of being behind, but now that they're at scale, they're able to incorporate the core standalone is starting to launch. You're you're seeing it in certain markets on mid band. There's still the low band portion, but again, that's still tied to LTE. Still a lot of usage on LTE. But Verizon will work through that. And I think at the end of it, I mean, T-Mobile and Verizon, they're going to meet each other in the middle, right? We're going to have LTE, just like we had LTE Plus and LTE Advanced and all that. We're, we're heading to the same situation now, 5G Advanced. Um, there might be another standard, who knows, 5G Plus Advanced or 5G Advanced Plus, whatever. And then we'll eventually head to 6G. And that's where I think Verizon is heading. They want to do millimeter wave more extensively. Um, than 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 even before, right? They want to do the multi dwelling units. They they want to use it for tons of capacity, right? So they're not going to just sit there. They're going to continue to deploy. They're going to densify. Verizon is going to densify for a C band grid. No matter if it's the metros, the suburban, the rural, where they need to densify, they will densify. So it's gonna get it's gonna get very interesting. But the head start that T Mobile had. You know, I'm, I don't want to say they're hitting a bump in the road or they're hitting red tape, but now the devices have to start catching up to the uh, to the network. So maybe next year's iPhone will have a modem, right? Who knows if it's going to be an Apple modem or if they're going to go with Snapdragon again, hopefully the X75 maybe. That'll allow for users to be able to use 5G advanced features, but until then... I mean, you're 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 gonna have to pretty much be either a, a Google Pixel user. I I don't even think they have those features, but if uh, yeah, I guess a Google Pixel would would be able to make use of it as well. They have the X seventy five. So yeah, so Google Pixel nine Pro uh, would be a good device. The S twenty four and the twenty five I saw on the list, but the iPhones uh, simply a no go. They are not able to take advantage of any of these new five G. Uh, software updates that are coming out. Um, so yeah, you can check the article out. I'll leave a link to it in the description. Uh, but just wanted to talk about this from a, from a point of Verizon. Like, what's the rush, right? What's the big rush when you're going to start outpacing OEMs and laptops and everything else, right? So you're you're constantly chasing your own tail with this. So slowly but surely, it's going to start being incorporated, right? More devices. You got to have a few generations of new devices launch before more consumers um, get it in the hands and be able to use 5G Advance, right? We have have the average user um, upgrading devices that's getting extended every year, right? Three years, four years until they swap out devices. So we need several iterations of new devices before more and more people are able to take advantage of 5G Advanced. So it's a good thing to see, but Verizon is not far behind. They're working each and every day, quarter after quarter, to extend and uh, expand its its C band reach. And I think now they w- they will start coming closer and closer and closer to uh, to meeting T Mobile where where they're at. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, follow my social media outlets. This is Tyrone with Tech Live. See y'all in the next one. Peace.